Hi everyone, Mr. Lee here. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you the FET website, the simulation that you are going to use for the projectile motion lab. Um, now, this is a great resource because it has so many tools uh, that showcase what we've been learning up until this point. So, let's get started. Uh, when you click on the link, you'll be given these four options. Uh, so, what I want us to focus on uh, is the intro, the vectors, and the lab itself. So, if I click on the intro, uh, this shows us everything that we can do. Uh, it shows us that we can move this uh, platform up and down. Uh, it can show us that we can move this bullseye left and right. Okay. Um, we have a function to zoom in and out. Okay. And it allows us to move this angle right here. Now, for the sake of our lab, we'll be uh, always working with zero degrees. Um, it gives us this tool of a measuring device, a measuring tape, if you will. Okay. Uh, if you don't want it, you can just put it back where you found it. Um, and this tool right here is what we're going to use the most. Okay. So you can shoot different objects. So you, if you want to shoot a pumpkin, uh, you can shoot a football, a tank shell, a golf ball. I'm going to stick with the pumpkin. I think that's pretty cool. Um, and here we have air resistance. Now we don't want to have air resistance uh, because we haven't done any calculations that deal with air resistance. Right, now we've talked a lot about vectors, and so I want to showcase us uh, this vectors uh, option, mainly because uh, we've been talking a lot about vectors, but seeing it in motion is uh, really important for the understanding of, the, of this lab. So if I click uh, the components and the total, we can see exactly what happens when we fire this cannon. So if I click fire, Oh, look at that. So we just fired a pumpkin and it went along this path. Okay. I'm going to click slow so that we can actually see it in motion. So I'm going to fire it. Now you can see that this is the vertical velocity, okay, or the y velocity, and this is the x velocity, the horizontal velocity. So I'm going to play this again, but what I want you to do is I want you to notice the magnitude, the size of the vectors um, of the horizontal and the vertical as it's being fired. Now, is that cool? So hopefully what you saw was the vertical vector increases as it falls down. And that's because in the vertical direction, there is a acceleration and we call that the acceleration due to gravity. But you notice here in the horizontal one, there that magnitude doesn't change at all. It's, it, it stays the same size. And that's because there is no horizontal acceleration. Uh, another cool thing that you'll notice is that the total velocity is big and bold right there, and we found out how to uh, calculate that uh, total velocity as well. But you'll notice that as the y vector increases, this total velocity vector, it goes from more horizontal to more vertical, because more and more of the y velocity takes over. Okay, So that's just the intro. Uh, let's do the lab itself. Oh, also, if you want to explore more about the vectors, you can click on the uh, the vectors button here. Okay, um, but the lab itself. All right. So if I click on the lab now, with the lab function, it basically gives you an option to do everything uh, from scratch. Okay, uh, everything is at zero. Uh, they give you an angle, but you can adjust the angle, um, and you can create your own projectile. So I'm gonna stick with the pumpkin. I like firing pumpkins. Uh, I'm going to increase this height to whatever height you want. Uh, let's make it at, I don't know, five, right? Five meters. Uh, and I'm going to adjust the angle so that it's at zero. Now, for this height, you can choose whatever height you want. Now, I do recommend uh, anything from 10 meters and up uh, so that we get a lot of good data points. Uh, and for the initial speed, uh, I also recommend anything that is 10 meters per second and up so that you get enough data points. Now, I'll show you exactly what I mean by enough data points, right? So I'm going to increase this up here and uh, let's make this fire at 15 meters per second. So I fire this off. Okay, so you see uh, along this path here, there's these tiny dots. Uh, and if I click on this tool, if I hover over that dot, it tells me all the data points for that dot. So uh, from the time it was fired, when it reaches that position, that position, uh, it took 0.6 seconds. 
Uh, it went out for a range of 9 meters, so assuming that this cannon is position 0, okay, horizontally it went out 9 meters, uh, and this is 12.23 meters above the ground, okay, if we started off at 14 meters. Now, we can get all of these data points along this path, and the more data points, the better. Now, let me show you something that doesn't work. So if we do this, let's make it super slow, All right? Let's do that. Okay. So here, you know, it's it's nice and all, but it's like barely going anywhere. All the data points is basically be the it's gonna be the same unless you're in the y direction. And have to make this more of a point. Look at that, right? Hardly much data. Okay. So you want a nice uh, projectile horizontal projectile motion like this. Um, so I do recommend anything that's a little bit higher up. You can zoom out if you want. Um, oh, it, oh, I didn't notice that. You can only go up to 15 meters, right? So uh, anything between 10 and 15 meters, I think, is good. And uh, anything with a little bit more of a horizontal velocity so that you get some good data, okay? Make sure you don't have the air resistance on. Uh, and make sure you keep the gravity as 9.8. .8. If you want to see what it's like on different planets, uh, you can adjust the uh, the acceleration due to gravity. Um, the mass and the diameter, that won't affect much, and you're going to fire it, and you're going to collect data. So in your Google Sheets, uh, you're going to create three columns, one for the time, one for the range, and one for the height, and you're going to create the graphs that I asked you to create, uh, and you're going to do some graphical analysis, um, and it's the same kind of graphical analysis that we focus on at the beginning of the unit, uh, where you're looking at the slope and the area of the curve. All right.